One exam down and two to go in this our shared exploration of Microsoft's MCSA certification. Once again, I'm Greg Shields, and together I look forward to spending the next series of courses with you, exploring the various functional groups, the objectives, and the individual tasks that make up those things you need to know for success on the 70-411 exam. I'm also excited because this 411 exam is kind of a part two of all the things that we explored back in the 70-410, hopefully the first one you took in this series of three for the MCSA. And because of the way the content was actually gathered together, in a way, the 7411 is probably a touch easier than the 70-410. In part because in order to pass the 410, there are a variety of things on the 411 that you probably needed to know. And hopefully over the next series of courses, we'll have an opportunity to just nail down those very specific facts that are necessary as we drill through those tasks and technologies that are specific to this, the 411. But before we get into the actual content related to the 411, I think it's worthwhile for us to re-review where we stand in that whole path towards certification. Here in this module, you'll probably get a lot of repeat. In fact, if you saw the 410 version of this same module, well, you're in for a lot of the same content, all the way down to what is really a cut and paste in the second module of this course on how to set up that virtualization environment. So if you were paying attention to everything that began that 410 course, feel free to skip forward into the very first course of actual content coming up, because a lot of what you'll see here will be review. If you haven't, well, here in this module, we're going to talk about the introduction to that 411 exam and also the MCSA in general. We'll look at Microsoft certification and where the MCSA stands in the greater span of Microsoft certification in general. We'll talk a bit about the 411's intended audience. So what kind of person and what kind of skill sets and experience is this exam generally intended for? We'll talk a bit about the learning path. Uh, here in Pluralsight, it's sometimes difficult to figure out exactly which course follows which course. So I'll show you here in this module, and again at the beginning of each course, exactly what the appropriate order is, or at least my order for filming these and helping you get through the content from one side to the other. We'll explore what the exam covers, so the different functional groups that make up the exams, the different objectives in those functional groups, and then the tasks in those objectives. One thing you'll find as you start flipping through all the different functional groups, objectives, and tasks is that here for this content, for the entire learning path that we've set up here, the idea is to try to align the things that we're exploring with the very specific tasks and objectives that the exam requires. So you'll notice as you flip through each objective and each task in each objective that there's a loose association between them and the clips and the modules that you'll see here in this learning path. So we'll talk a bit about how the exam covers that and exactly what you'll see as you flip through all the courses in this learning path. We'll also explore what's changed for R2. This is essentially the version 2 of the 70-411 with all new content and all new questions related to Windows Server 2012 R2. For this last piece, I mainly want to point you to a very important document on Microsoft's website where you can get those objectives and functional groups, as well as a bit of a delta guide on what changed from the original release of the exam to what we're now studying for in this R2 release.